Bueno, Martín de Noyel es muy conocida, necesita poca presentación. Eh, ella es especialista en cerámica griega, sobre todo en, en figuras rojas, y es conservadora y jefa de patrimonio del Departamento de Antigüedades Griegas del Louvre. Eh, desde 2008 hasta el 2013 ha dirigido la versión digital del proyecto Images and Uses y tiene dos grandes obras, dos libros, uno sobre cerámica griega en época geométrica y orientalizante que publicó en 2013 y otro sobre cerámica griega de Paestum precisamente en el Museo del Louvre en 2011. Entonces, no, no quiero entretenerme más y doy paso inmediatamente a la profesora de Noyel. Espero que funcione. Thank you very much. Uh, good morning to all. I'm very happy to be fully back with you. Um, I'm grateful to the colleagues of the, the Madrid Autonomous uh, University and of the uh, National Archaeological Museum for inviting me uh, to participate in this program. Um, uh, and uh, I, I join them also and all of you uh, in recording with deep esteem and affection our late colleague Paloma Cabrera, uh, whom I met in 2003 and whose dedication, cleverness and kindness Uh, I have been able to appreciate ever since. I shall try today to consider how we can, through the study of an individual uh, vast painter, which is my usual approach, uh, reflect on his creative uh, process, um, um, confronted with what we can know uh, through the incomplete information that we have of the distribution of his value. I am not on my main territory since I have uh, worked for many years now on the activity of the South Italian Vest Painters and particularly um, with Francesca Silvestrelli on the workshops on the, of the colonial city of uh, Metaponto uh, in, in really a, a macro study uh, of the workshops of painters and the distribution in, in the territory um, Greek and in the indigenous uh, area. But uh, it is... Um, Uh, while working on this production, the, on the work um, that the, uh, the Attic Palace painter has appeared to me as remarkable, uh, particularly interesting, and a key personality to reflect on the notions that we are talking about uh, since yesterday of distribution, influence, uh, shared visual language, special commission, or cross fertilizing exchanges between producer and recipient. All these notions are uh, in the very core, uh, currently, of the studies on South Italian red figure pottery. In Bisley's Attic Red Figure Vast Painter, the chronicle steps of the production are reflected by a succession of books. Each of which is composed of one or several chapters representing different production units. Um, from the individual vast painter to a workshop or to some groups uh, sharing the same typology, uh, which uh, are called, in this case, classes. The late classical Athenian vast production, which roughly covers the last quarter of the 5th century, is thus contained in the books 15 to uh, 18, which represent the chapters uh, 70 to 76, where one finds uh, workshops specialized in shapes like cups, for Oinohoi, little vases, other who share stylistic features or iconographic choices, like the vast chapter on the media circle, uh, dominated by representations of women's life, eros, and allegoric scenes in erotic context, or uh, techniques that are also chapters on the white ground, uh, like Ether. The so-called pot painters, and I apologize for these lexical refinements, but as you know, Bisley's vocabulary is always a precision tool of his classifications. Um, the pot painter, which, which differentiates from the painter of, cup, of cups, lekithoi, and small pots, are represented in two chapters, the chapter 70, which is the one of the media circle, and the chapter 71, uh, which I'm uh, interested in, which is called Other Pot Painters. This last chapter, with its rather vague title, is very heterogeneous, uh, made of painters or groups or classes who have few or nothing in common. 
the range of shapes, uh, their iconographic choices, and their areas of distribution are different. Um, from the Talos painter that we're going to see, uh, to uh, the Kiev painter, for instance, who had three vases um, that comes from the Black Sea, for, from Kerch, Tamen, uh, or Kiev. Um, and um, the major part of these painters or groups have a limited number of vases, which doesn't seem to embody the reality of uh, productive activity. However, uh, these painters, some of them, some, some among these painters, even with small corpuses, are considered to be the representatives of an ambitious artistic trend, which reproduces and diffuses contemporary Athenian masterworks of major art, uh, such as the wall paintings, or such as some elements of the decoration of the Parthenon. These are the Talos painter that you have in the center of the slide, the Ponomos painter on, your, on, the, on the left, and uh, on, the, on the right, sorry, and the Suesula painter uh, on the left. While presenting the work of the street painter, John Boardman, uh, in his um, attic red figure vases of the classical period, um, refers indeed to Polygnotos and Nikon, and to the scene that decorated the shield of the Athena Parthenos, the uh, Gigantomachy and uh, an Amazonomachy. About the famous Talos painter's name vase, um, the volute crater house in the Museo Nazionale Iata in Nuvo, he also writes, I, I quote, the white and the brown on Talos body is a good attempt to match the fuller palette of the muralists in depicting the expiring brazen giant. We may easily imagine such a figure as a centerpiece of a panel painting, whether or not the scene was further developed in a frieze, uh, end of uh, citation. So these painters, to whom uh, one can also add uh, the Mikian painter, uh, would be the bearers of the spirit of Athenian civic and religious best figured masterworks. Indeed, uh, the Talos painter, who counts in Bisley only five of his and other a majority of fragments near him or in this manner, is probably the most remarkable vast painter of his time as confirmed by some vases appeared with the extension of the, uh, his corpus after Bisley. The corpus regularly updated in the Bisley Archive Pottery Database uh, is gathering today 34 vases or fragments. A lot uh, part, let's say, of this uh, newly attributed fragment come from the Athenian Agora published in uh, 1997 in the uh, volume 30 of Athenian Agora Excavation by Mary Moore. And some of them uh, present, uh, indeed, uh, some precise stylistic links with the name vase, like, for instance, on, on a very small fragment attributed by Corbett that you have in the, uh, underneath, um, the treatment of the eyelid and the pupil of, pupil of the eye with uh, shadowing in brown dilute glaze, um, along with the other stylistic features, are very typical of the uh, Telos painter. But the name and the diversity of scholars who have attributed uh, big or small fragments of various provenance to the painter uh, makes of this post Bisley corpus uh, a less solid material for exploiting and interpreting the characteristic of the painter or at least uh, it's a part of the corpus that still need to be checked because it's much more heterogeneous in approaches and in personalities of colors that, than what the one of Bisley. But indeed, uh, even Bisley himself considered the major part of the items new, near to rather than by the painter, which was no doubt a, thing, a sign of caution, as he was sometimes very puzzled by some stylistic variations in the drawing of the figures. But while trying to remain as cautious as was Bisley, I don't know if it's possible, uh, one can uh, draw up an interesting picture for the vases, either in Bisley or out of Bisley, which share evident or firm stylistic resemblances. The Talos crater, 
found on the Paris room is remarkable that, that not only by shapes and dimensions, dimensions of the figure that uh, are all uh, occupy all the, the, the height of the of the, the walls, um, so are very very tall, um, but also by its subject, nearly unique in the attic production and surely unique by the general conception of the episode represented and the figure language used by the painter. It shows the encounter in Creta between the Argonauts with the bronze giant Talos, who in the picture uh, has just been defe defeated and is shown dying, uh, supported by the Dioscuri, Castor, and Pollux. Around the central group, marked by the body, the white body of Talos, totally raised in white over painting, uh, with detailed in gold brown uh, diluted glaze, um, one can see Medea, the Boreal, Cetes, and Calais the stern of the boat uh, Argos, and also Poseidon and Amphitrite and uh, Nymph or Nereid. Most of the figures are named by an inscription near the head, like Medea, Poseidon, Amphitrite, Zetes and Calais, and also uh, the Nike on the side B, um, Athena, Hera, Jason on the side B. Uh, Nike has uh, her own inscription with uh, over her head. As uh, accepted by and on the food in an article of uh, 1999 on the saga of the Argonauts, um, the my Miss Beth Beth's original composition is destined to a certain category of Western client, clients, as clearly shown by a conjunction of various features. And the two authors said, Il vaso di Ruvo presenta nel suo programma programma figurativo alcuni particolari che semanticamente lo legano alla produzione occidentale contemporanea più che agli altri vasi attici con lo stesso schema. No, sorry, a, a little difficult to pass from Italian to English. Um, therefore, uh, the figure language seems to be closer to the Occidental Western production uh, rather that, than to the Attic uh, tradition. Uh, first, um, this episode of the Arconaut cycle is very rare, limited to the Italian area, and to be found on two other Attic vases only. The first one is a column crater of about uh, 440 BC, attributed to the group of polygonators that you have under the eyes, and found in Campania, in the north of Campania, the, the ancient Samian, in uh, the ancient city, on the site of the ancient city of Caudion, Monte Sartio. There, I want to see in a simpler uh, composition the group of the dying giant on the, on, on the right, supported by two youths, who must be the Dioscuroi, as well as Medea, holding um, Pixis, a box, and Jason, helped by a winged figure, picking off the nail that closes the vein uh, going through Talos' body to kill, to deactivate uh, him, and the giant is uh, collapsing. The second uh, example of the thing we can do is a segment of a calyx um, spina, dating from the end of the 5th century, and very near uh, in its composition to the Talos bullet crater, as you can see, Although Bisley considered it was not by the Talos painter, it was in a very different style. Um, and I think it's rightly. Uh, the Rubo Calix Crater, uh, Volute Crater, sorry, is the most complete image of the episode, and in emphasizing the presence of the Dioscuri and the Boreades among the Argonauts, it reflects creative choices that are those, as was uh, stated by uh, Pontandolfo and Mugione, of uh, contemporary South Italian red figure vases, like the Phineus uh, Volute crater uh, found in Ruvo, once attributed to the Abit Coast painter, but more probably now um, generally considered to be uh, produced in Taranto, uh, or the Amicus Hydria, with uh, the punishment of Amicus in the Bibliothèque Nationale in Paris. This purely Occidental tradition will pass into Etruscan art especially in the repertoire of bronze mirrors. And uh, therefore, the Talos Volute Crater is the head of the tradition, but it is not uh, an, a Western production. 
Um, uh, let's say that uh, the dates uh, obviously are not uh, precisely uh, fixed uh, between the Taylor's crater, they say usually uh, 420 or 410 BC. Here we have another one, 510 BC. We don't know uh, obviously who influenced the other, but uh, the phenomenon begins uh, contemporarily. Um, furthermore, the, the unusual, unusual central figure of the dying giant's body, entirely painted white, white, which marks the middle of the vase, offers a striking visual similarity with the symbolic system that will be in the core of the funerary language of Apulian vases uh, later, from the beginning of the 4th century onwards. The white added color will become a semantical sign of the pas passage to death for the figures that are placed in the nase, because or on the grave, and that become, uh, let's say, a kind of statue. This is not a coincidence, as it's not the shape of the vase, particularly appreciated by the Hellenized uh, Peucesian aristocrat of Fruvo, a site in which the Apulian volute crater are largely exported from Taranto, and we have seen that uh, yesterday in the um, presentation of uh, Cleopatra Cataliu. As well as the subject, the figure language adopted by the painter for the decoration uh, of the vase shows the knowledge of the cultural habits and preferences of his clients. The Prunimus crater that we have seen before, found on the same site, tells a similar story, being also through its satiric and um, theatrical iconography, an original creation that appears precisely intended to a local commission, and this has been discussed by uh, some scholar like uh, Ted Robinson, for instance. Another vase with uh, an ambitious and very rare fitting most probably from the same phase of his career, um, is by the, the Talos painter, and it comes from Rouvo. It is a big a fragment of Calix crater, which appears in the same chapter 71 of IAV2, but had been placed by Bisley near to the Pronomos painter. That's uh, an interesting uh, question. He didn't see the other style of the Talos painter. But interestingly, um, Fort Wengler and also Helen, already uh, both of them favored an attribution to or very near to the Talos painter. And I have reattributed this fragment and I'm been followed by uh, Federica Jacobella. Jacobello, who has uh, worked uh, on the vase. Um, it's without any doubt um, in the resemblances with the style of uh, the, the, the other vase firmly attributed. And you can see here, uh, for instance, uh, the treatment of the bodies but, and uh, of the, the hair, but also uh, this uh, treatment of the eye, of the eyelid, of the pupa uh, of the eye, uh, and the general use of the dilute glaze, which is very uh, particular. Uh, with the uh, enlarging of the corpus, it makes no doubt that the Telos painter is the author of this second vase. Uh, the shape of the calyx crater is not, not so much diffused in, in, on, on the site of Rouvre as the volute crater, and it is more favored, for instance, in the communities of inside Lucania, more western uh, area. But uh, one has to note instead that this is a, a shape that is very well uh, represented in, in, in the Taranto funerary uh, uses, and therefore maybe we have here also an illustration of this capillarity of this uh, community of uses uh, between the colonial city and some very important uh, sites that are Hellenized. Um, the theme of the Jaingantumaki is the secret figure production of the 5th century, as is in major part art and generally considered as charged with a deeply historical and political significance. It will be also appreciated and depicted with a similar emphasis by the best uh, Apulian painters of the 4th century, such as the Lycurgus or Darius painters. One of the most complete versions of the scene is a fight which decorates over the neck amphora by the Swiss painter in the Louvre, 
another painter uh, of Bizelet's chapter 71. The emperor in the Louvre, acquired at the end of the 19th century from a French collection, is said, uh, and this is a provenance that comes from the market, um, to come from the island of Milos, which is very strange. And we, when I was when I was working in the Louvre and working in the archives and, and um, researching searching provenances, uh, we have always thought that it was very dubious. Instead, uh, several small neck uh, amphorae with uh, exactly the same typology but in a reduced uh, format, um, as well as a few uh, craters, uh, come from Suezula or from Kumae in Campania. The shape itself is known to have been very popular among the comp companion communities, as testified by the Nolan Amphorae uh, imported locally, and also by the later tendencies of the South Italian workshops in Campania of the first, um, fourth century, and particularly this shape with neck amphora with twisted handles uh, is to be found in the principal workshop of Capua. The amphora, therefore, probably comes from this area, and the shape of the shapes reflect arrogant uh, regional taste. And you can see uh, how different are and the shape uh, and the iconography of these two vases, the, the Calix crater fragment in, um, from Rouvre, and the neck emperor by the Suisuda painter, probably from uh, Campania. Uh, Federica Giacobello, uh, in her article, of the Calix crater and of its uh, decoration. La gigantomachia raffigurata sul cratere Rovestino non ha confronti per l'unicità della composizione della scena e per la scelta di cogliere i giganti nell'atto non solo di difendersi dalle divinità e di contrattaccare, ma anche di tentare la scalata all'Olimpo ammassando pietre. And this is what we uh, see here and you see the giants with uh, either arms but also rocks um, that uh, are climbing the Olympus uh, to uh, reach the gods. Indeed, uh, the neat vertical division of the space between the earth, symbolized also by Ge issuing from the ground uh, in the, the right uh, part of the earth, uh, like a sort of anodos. And the sky were the gods, um, and we see uh, the chariot of Helios arising on, also on the right. It's formalized by the decorated band that has been much commented, as it could reflect uh, the organization of the same scene, a cosmological fight, represented on the interior part of uh, Athena Parthenos' shield, painted by Phidias. If the influence of the Parthenos shield, decorated with an Amazonomachy and a Gigantomachy, has been observed since long on the figured repertoire of the big vases of this period, and the Suezula uh, painter Amphora, for instance, uh, being among, the, among the, the most cited and studied examples, we could have here a unique occurrence of a direct allusion to the shield. Anyhow, while no other Attic painter will reiterate this, this scheme, the clear separation of the earthly and evenly spaces in the gigantomachy of the fragment in Naples is repeated by the Lycurgus painter, for instance, on a volute crater in the Hermitage, where the, the, the difference is marked by a sort of nimbus, the only god to fight the giants on Earth uh, in the Lycurgus painter ver version is Heracles. So all the other gods are in uh, the uh, beyond, let's say, this uh, limit. Uh, so it's uh, fundamentally the, uh, a similar conception of uh, the organization of the fight. The fight. What to conclude from this example of um, iconography? As is the case of the Talos vase, the iconography of the Calix crater found in Rovo is unique and finds a success session only in the Apulian production and by a painter, uh, the Lycurgus painter, whose craters are overrepresented in Rouvo. Uh, a lot of volute crater by this painter 
uh, which really um, spectacular painter of Holy Crater, are found in Rouvo. The reattribution of the Naples uh, Calix Crater fragment to the Talos painter allows those to confirm a tendency of his. This is uh, the adaptation of his production to a definite cultural context, in this case, uh, and it is not uh, a current context because the uh, Eocetian yeah. site of Fruvo is a very wealthy and important site uh, during the classical period. It's a correspondent of Taranto and receives a lot, of, as it was receiving a lot of Attic vases, it will receive after a lot of Apulian um, vases um, of, of great uh, interest. Um, so we can really um, track this draws this equation uh, between uh, the importance of the site and uh, each time uh, the creation by the painter of Talos of a special iconography, which uh, will fit with the figure language of the South Italian um, uh, artistic expression. Two other vases of the same uh, stylistic and iconographic level seem instead to be referential to some important cultural elements of the colonial city of Taranto itself. First, um, an amphora of a pseudo palatinaic shape acquired by the Museo Marta mm -hmm. from a private collection, the Rotondo collection, uh, said to have been formed in, in the very area of Taranto, and therefore likely to have been found in Taranto, Inspired by the Attic Black Figure Panathenaic exemplaries, several of which have been found in the Taranto necropolis, the shape will also be popular in the South Italian production. It is the main shape of amphora produced in the colonial workshops uh, of the Ionian uh, coast, like Taranto or Metaponto. In funerary context, it has a special role and function linked to its symbolic and heroic value, as recalled by Stint Kiel. Not only the shape, the shape, but also some that are used also by the first South Italian workshops, as shown by comparing with some examples like a pseudo panathenaic red figure uh, by the Hearst painter, which is one of the first Tarantine painters, and we can situate around uh, 400 20 BC, whose um, work must be slightly anterior to the one of the Talos painter even. The conception and decoration of the upper parts, shoulder and neck, appear similar, including the branch of floral with uh, the use of some white overpainted adjunct uh, on the mouth. The Taranto amphora uh, is a holistic or programmatic vase entirely dedicated to celebrate Heraclius, no, I mean it there, uh, apotheosis and cult. On one, one side, it shows, the, it shows the apotheosis of the hero uh, carried towards the Olympus in a quadriga drive by Iolaos uh, instead of Athena on, on other vases. The two Nikai on the two sides uh, hold a Timiatarion, a fiale and a vegetal garland to crown the, the hero. And they are very beautiful. Uh, the, the, the thema is treated contemporarily in Attic production, and you have here, for instance, uh, an aposeas this by the Cadmos painter uh, uh, on an, an, a pelican in, in mention, mention. However, the dynamic uh, scheme of Heracles uh, on the chariot with either Athena or Iolaus uh, is a bit nearer to the one created by the painter of the birth of Dionysus on his big vault crater in Brussels. And that's also one of the first representatives uh, in Taranto of the ornate style at the end of the 5th century. Very close uh, from one vase to the other, you see here Talos painter, painter of uh, birth of Dionysus, uh, are the figures of Nikkei, the one on the Attic Amphora holding ritual instruments, a Thimiatarian and two fialai, while the one on the South Italian volute crater preceding the chariot holds a stand of Cotabos as it 
was for the hero soon joining the divine uh, symposium evocated by the figure reclining figure of Dionysus uh, in the lower parts. On the other side, side of the amphora, uh, the hero is currently seated in front of a small building made of a flat roof uh, supported by four Doric columns, and that can be interpreted as a heroine and allude to a cult of Heracles. Facing him, a foot on a rock is Athena, who gazes at him. On the roof of the building are, are gathered ritual objects, tenias, uh, branches of olive tree, and a libes um, bands, uh, and a, a libes gamikos put uh, upside down. As pointed by uh, Amelia Damichis, this detail appears also on a fragment of Amphora com coming from the Taranto necropolis with an exactly uh, similar description of the summit of the building and of its decoration with the little uh, flowers, uh, still stylized flowers and, and stars, uh, which make no doubt that both uh, are by the same hand. So it's another fragment of Amphora by a Talos painter from the context of the necropolis. The presence of the two vases in Taranto by the Taros painter, both evocating exceptionally the scene of heroic cult, added to the peculiar choice of the shape, which has been demonstrated to correspond in this area and at this time to heroic values, seems to comfort the vision of the painter as thoroughly informed of the use and of the signification that the vase was to have for his Tarantine buyers. Let's go to another phase now. The fragmentary in Wolfsburg, dated around 400 BC, um, which show apparently a divine assembly attending a musical or a satirical uh, performance and is very near in style to the Talos crater and must belong to the same, really to the same period. The shape isn't clear. Um, it is presented now in the, in the museum as a calyx crater, so I will follow this. Uh, Bisley had seen the fragments uh, while they were in the Langlots collection, and uh, the CVA described a volute crater, but uh, it may have um, known an evolution. It, is, uh, it comes from Taranto. Um, the fragments had been considered as near to the Talos painter by Bisley, but the attribution to the painter himself is comforted by Erika Zeman in the Corpus Valsorum uh, Antiquorum. There are some additional fragments to the big uh, main fragment with the head of Hephaestus probably and uh, a satyr playing Olos who, who is called Mimos, yes. uh, always inscriptions and uh, when see, uh, less better here in, on, on the black and white photograph, but uh, all the treatment of the eyes is very, very um, specific. The stylistic features like the elaborated decoration of the garments, here detail with uh, the garment of Athena uh, with a battle in red figure um, that uh, we find back in, in other vases. Or uh, the anatomy of the impressive and uh, spectacular reclining figure of a mature uh, Dionysus, birded, uh, find a series of correspondences with the Talos crater. Here, for instance, compare the drawing of the torsos of the two gods, uh, the rendering of the hairiness. I cannot uh, show you, but you see the little uh, track that, that uh, uh, along the, um, the, the, the muscles of the, the torso, the position and the uh, drawing of the hands. Ah. Okay. Um, as also on the Naples Gigantomachki uh, Calyx crater, characteristic is the use of a gold brown uh, diluted blaze for the hair of the, of the pupils. These three vases, going together with the of Amphora, which could be a little earlier, share therefore the same inspiration and the same refined technical means, showing the accuracy and the attention paid by the painter to the realization of an out of ordinary work. Uh, the scene uh, on the crater uh, 
such a drama uh, is one more unique and the compositive scheme of the figure of Dionysus reclining in the pose of the banqueter, holding his tiercus and cantaros is quite unusual in the Attic iconographic repertoire of this time. Indeed, it reminds strongly of the Tarantine votive terracotta figures found either in graves or in sanctuary, either birded or birdless, but from the 6th century until the 4th century and onwards, um, Tarantine choroplasts produced nearly obsessionally with very few or no change in the iconographic scheme. Agnes Bench has added that the artistic origin of this type is to be searched not only in the archaic Ionian or Samian terracotta models, but also in the Laconian tradition as a result of Spartan origins of the colonial city of Taranto. On the Attic archaic black figure cups imported in Taranto and found in the aristocratic graves of, of the necropolis, uh, like for instance the Sianak the cups, the pattern is also recurrent. The type used by the painter for his Dionysus would be therefore, and it's a proposition, uh, deeply rooted in uh, the, the identity of the visual talent in visual language, its permanence being indicative, at least in the terracottas, of a codificated ritual language. And there uh, we find this notion of shared iconographic um, codes that uh, we have seen with uh, the very interesting uh, talk of uh, Jorge Thomas. Uh, there was a slide showing the relationship between the painter and the audience, and we find back this uh, very notion. The distribution of the vases uh, by the Talos painter would deserve, obviously, a much more detailed study than a paper or a talk, and especially for the point of view of the context. With, uh, there are a few contexts uh, that uh, have to be um, studied very, very in, in a very detailed way. Um, the considerations that are developed here may be considered as a first synthetic overview, as a synthetic proposition. I want to move on the verses from Louvre and Taranto, since they offer precise elements to reflect on the painter's adaptation of shapes and iconographies to his Western market. But what we also have to consider in first place, this question in the frame of other provenances, and secondly, in the frame of, of the Athenian market. Among the vases attributed to the painter that have a provenance, uh, one will find the Basilicata, the Etruria, um, but also uh, uh, the Sicily, uh, but, also, uh, the, uh, but also Athens. Uh, and... Um, just an example here of another introduction of Heracles uh, into the Olympus from the one we've um, A fragment in Pisa that is uh, attributed to the uh, Talos painter and which puzzles me a, a bit because it shows a scene with a dead goose uh, and a small part of a male figure with thick and disordered hair and belongs to a very different register than the other vases in the list. Uh, so um, I don't know what to, to think of it, but uh, we have to consider this. Instead, um, the stylistic features of a fragment found in Ampurias and published in particular in the exhibition catalog Los Gregos in España, uh, uh, Madrid uh, 2000, by Marta Santos and Pere Castanier, uh, make it a, a very serious candidate to the corpus of the, the Taros painter. Uh, I apologize very deeply for the bad quality and annotated Xerox. I don't have another picture. Um, and uh, maybe someone in the audience here could, could help me to have one. But um, one fine, interesting thing like the composition in two levels with a quadriga uh, issuing from sort of mount, uh, and some very precise details that can be related to other vases in the corpus of the painter. Uh, it has been found in the, the zone, uh, the, the area of the, the Asclepius temple, and also the, the scene remains unclear. Dana is false, uh, maybe because uh, they, they, they hold some hydria, uh, or an abduction, an abduction scene, uh, maybe with the uh, Lecapides. Uh, this provenance is very interesting, uh, as not so frequent for the Attic vases of this period, I think. Uh, maybe you can discuss this and uh, unique uh, in the, this um, chapters of, chapter of uh, Beasley. So in addition with 
to this uh, important group of vases uh, made for the market for the exportation both Bisley's list and the publications after Bisley enumerate a series of vases or fragments that have been found in Athens and illustrate the kind of production that the painter destinated to his own community for its ritual and religious needs. The range of shapes includes a volute crater, a pseudo panathenaic amphora, if you see here, uh, a bell crater, uh, but uh, for the most part, these are um, lutrophori and lebetes, uh, ritual wedding vessels that, and I quote Vittoria Sabetai, did not form part of organized trade beyond Attica and were distinct local implements with a symbolic and performative function. A lot of the fragments have been found on the Athenian Agora, but um, are frequently too small to have a distinct iconography, but you can see with the inscription uh, that we have here a fragment uh, with the name of Chipolemus, and uh, on the, the, the left uh, high, you, we have a man that holds uh, seemingly a lutro for us. So uh, there is a ritual um, aspect. The, oh, so, sorry, the Panathenaic Amphora, which is worth comparing with, with the, comparing with the entire two, uh, the typologies, the uh, general composition, and the decoration are diverse. Uh, it's decorated all around with a sacrificial procession. Uh, some uh, of the names the attendants inscribed, inscribed being those of Attic heroes like here, Coprus. The, this foot uh, uh, in the Metropolitan Museum uh, shows all around Athena, Heracles, and Euros, um, another goddess, and Zeus or Poseidon. Uh, and um, as for the iconography of the Lutophoros and Lebetes, this could with, fit, fit well with the observation expressed by Victoria Sabetaiza that although marriage vessels bear imagery that accord with their function in the ceremonies, some elaborate examples dedicated to the great sanctuaries adopt an iconography that takes into account the specific myths and cults associated with the goddesses um, or the gods venerated uh, there. Um, I, I, I'm going to conclude, uh, so I, I, I excuse the, the rest of the citation, but uh, the, let's say the partition between the vases uh, created and decorated for, for the South Italian, Etruscan, or other markets, and for the Greek or for the Athenian market, is very clear uh, in the Talos painter's corpus, even if we have a lot of uh, uncertainties about the proveniences or the context still to be checked. And the specificities of shapes and languages extend to the level of the cities or even local communities, uh, either Greek or indigenous. The remarkable quality of the major part of the vase is reveals a learned painter that seems to specialize in focus commissions, using differently the range of shapes to suit local beliefs, needs, and local cultural languages. And a more provocative uh, thing uh, to, um, to finish, uh, I'd like to add uh, uh, to which is not attributed um, to the Taros painter, but rather to the R uh, group, the Reed Painter group, and which came to my attention uh, just when I, uh, when I was working on the definition of the Taros painter uh, copies. It's a uh, white ground lekisos from Athens, uh, dated 420, 410 BC, with a scene at the grave, young city warrior. Um, who is facing a grieving man and a grieving woman, his parents probably, and with two young women uh, behind him. It is um, a tribute to this vast art group, which is uh, active in Athens in the last quarter of the 5th century BC. Uh, unlike some other parts of the production of wild ground Lekito, like those attributed to the Achilles and Fiale painter, for instance, there are no identified links between the red painter, the art group, or, um, and, sorry, contemporary Athenian red figure painters. Uh, the academic separation between different techniques 
uh, is not rare. We find it back in, in for South Italian pottery, for instance, for the Gnassia vase and the Apulian red figure for pottery. Um, also, some recent studies in uh, South Italian uh, pottery have shed light on the predictable fact that some painters and workshops were practicing several techniques. What's right in the right Lekita by group R is first the diversity, indicating an important workshop with several hands, the anatomical conception and proportions of the fi figure, which sometimes are very near to those of the Talos painter. The white Lekita has been essentially related to the techniques of mural painting, the shaping, the cooking process, and the remaining parts in black glaze, uh, like mouth, neck, foot, necessarily implies the same technical uh, installations as does a uh, red figure. But I shall not conclude uh, on, on this. Um, it's uh, just um, another track to explore, maybe, uh, that could enrich with the complementary uh, question of the technique, the theme of the versatility of the attic painter in view uh, of the diversity of their market. And I must confess that uh, on this point of the versatility of the workshop and their, their precise answers, these incredibly uh, complex exchanges we exchange with uh, the, the, the clients, with the recipients, uh, I have taken some very important lessons from the most familiar to me, vast painter of South Italy, and especially from the Metapontine uh, workshops. So I will end this talk um, to by reassuming the question and the suggestion that it raises, I think that uh, uh, this painter, this excellent painter at the end of the 5th century, uh, may rightly be defined as an example of painter of special uh, commission, not a painter working with other in a definite trend of production, uh, with a kind of uh, normalization of shape and, and, and working organization uh, between potter and painter that we have seen yesterday in the uh, nice uh, talk of uh, Cleopatra Catayou with this incredible organization with several potters and well, uh, the, 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 the study of the typology helps us to understand this organization, group organization of the, of the work. Uh, we have an isolated painter who most probably worked in a workshop, but we don't have uh, the same, um, the same uh, uh, proofs of this. Uh, but, <laughs> In any case, he, he was specialized in specific ceremonial or ritual uses, um, which he was emphasizing by the high quality of his design, by the choice of his subject, and by the solemnity and the richness of his uh, iconography. Uh, all this probably, and I think John Boltman was surely right, inspired by the spirit of the great realizations of the classical Athens. And I thank you for your attention. Thank you.